Itchy nose. It's hat time. No, it's, this is my default um, default man flu get up. It's been pretty apocalyptic these last few days. Uh, I won't go into details, but you know, um, anybody anybody who's been there, uh, it's horrible. But <laughs> um, yeah, I've reverted back to a sweaty cam from a crack addict cam. So. So if I'm uh, if I'm looking more like a crack addict than normal, then uh, you can. That's sort of uh, the, the the man flu. You can blame that. But and if I'm not quite <laughs> upbeat on 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 the ball, then that's another reason. But anyway, um, yeah, best one collection A to Z. This is the tease. Nearly there. I mean, we've got, after this, this we've got four more to go, including this. So after this, is three more. Because I'm missing, what was it? I always forget what I'm missing. Use Y's and Z's. No use Y's or Z's. Um, but, um, see, I'll turn it. That's um, the Immortals. Not watching it. Saying it falls rubbish. <laughs> That's all right. It's got Mickey Rourke. Hamming it up in it, but anyway, yeah. PS1 collection A to Z. This is the tease. Um, Thirteen games. Um, Thirteen games. A uh, couple of series E's. Series E's. So this shouldn't take too long as thirteen games would suggest. Did I say names? Did I say names? I say games. Apologise, I'm not with it, but ugh. I've not eaten for about three days. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, right. What am I doing? This one collection. Tease, tease, to tease, tease, tease. Tease. First game. Team bodies. Um, by Signosis, I think it's by Signosis. It's developed, published. Don't know. I'm guessing published because it says library programs. I don't know a lot of library programs, even a developer. But, um, but Signosis has something to do with this. This is a really good, really good fun. Um, I suppose you could. What would you call it? God. So I don't even know what, what sort of category you lump it into. I think it's probably designed around a multiplayer. Judging by the gameplay, it's probably designed around the multiplayer and the, the single player, probably anything less than sort of four players because it, it's got four player support, multi tap. Anything less than four players feels like it, I don't know. But the idea is this character here is one of whole race of characters called buddies and all different colours game begins they sort of, they're living in this utopia they're like uh, there's like this sort of tent and there's like a rave going on in this tent and every, they all love each other and one day out of nowhere there's like this this big moon appears it's like a, a thing in the sky like um, it looks like one of the the, uh, the flying saucers out of an office, not fly source, is it? The things out of Independence Day just appears over their town, and these these things start dropping out of the out of the the thing, the moon. I forgot what they call it, and they land. And first of all, it sort of piques their interest. What are these things? That this thing that's sort of settled above our town. What what is it dropping for us? So one by one, a few individuals go over to these boxes. And just sort of like tap them, and they explode these boxes, and they they reveal weapons, and they start experimenting. They don't realise they're weapons. They pick them up, and they realise what they are. They're weapons, and from that point on, it's it's introduced this this utopian society of the buddies that they've got. It's introduced them to the the idea of war and death, and from that point on, they're just obsessed with sort of a you know. Killing each other and taking each other's shit. <laughs> it's 
it's basically the game. So you have to. And this is this is one. This is like like other certain puzzle games. This one takes a bit of explaining. Um, you have control over just sort of a territory, sort of a little bit territory in sort of a battle arena, and um, you have like this little pod thing. It's on the ground. It's like a grid of four. And basically, what you have to do, you have initially you have control over sort of two or three of of these colours. Oh, that's it. All the colours separate off into sort of races. It's quite typical in that sense, you know. Like there's reds and there's blues and there's greens and there's all these different sorts of colours and you can choose whichever one you play with in the beginning. And they all separate off into their own colours because they, they now realise that they're all sort of different with sort of a, now they've been introduced into, into weaponry and the idea of sort of death and these all these these things they'd never understood or never had a notion of before. And, and that, you know, I, I like that. It's quite sort of grown up an idea. It, it's sort of, it's quite a kiddie presentation, but um, apart from, you know, I mean, to look at, but it's actually quite adult. There's lots of uh, swearing and stuff in it, yeah. Um, the game is like an arena. It's almost like, what could you compare it to? I suppose like Hogs of War, Worms sort of thing, but you have direct control over these little, th these little characters, and they have to go around collecting these cubes. Each cube, you take it back to this little, little home plate grid thing that you've got. And you can arrange the cubes on this grid in certain formations, and then you can you can um, hit them, and they'll depending on the the formation you've left these little cubes, they'll reveal a weapon. Most of the cubes are red, but every so often you get a rare blue one. The rare blue one will give you better weapons, and you can you can sort of pile them up. You can arrange them in a certain grid, and then you can you sort of hit them, and, they go, and it, this appears this weapon. That, that's how you, you can go and. You can go and kill your enemies, and you can go and take their territory, and uh, that's basically the game. And there's all these little arenas, and it's, I imagine it's really good fun in four player. I can imagine it's mental. Unfortunately, I've never played it in four player, but it takes it's quite difficult to explain. That there, that's the little the little thing, your little home base, and you have that's like a one big cube. You have to get these little cubes and you put them on the big cube and you arrange them in a certain way and then they yield weapons. It's basically the game. And you, and you fight and you have to control territory and you have to kill your enemies and take the territory and stuff like that. It's really good fun, really playable. Um, I highly recommend it. Unfortunately, it's quite a collectible game, quite expensive. But, um, uh, quite adult, lots of swearing. What does it say on the front? Parental guidance. Look, don't say we didn't warn you. This game contains foul language, loads of violence, and tons of serious ammo. It might look cute, but it definitely ain't for kids. Okay. So that is like a high pitched um, Michael Caine. And on the back, it says, I'm the governor around here. You touch my base, you're dead. You steal my guns, you're dead. You mess with my mates, you're dead. In fact, you're going to have to work pretty hard just to stay alive, because any way you look at it, you're dead. Aggressive battle action game with some of the foulest language ever ever heard anywhere. 30 plus missions plus multiplayer games, back battles for up to four players. Those are big weapons, enough to compensate for even the smallest, the smallest dick. <laughs> Cheeky. But anyway, yeah, it's a really good game, really good fun. Um, I imagine even better, like I said, in very multiplayer. Um, I was going to say about it. I was going to say something about it. Yeah. Tekken. Tekken 3. Sorry, Tekken 2 and Tekken 3. Uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> um, never really been that bothered by the first game. Uh, it's a little bit too rough and not polished enough for me. I think this, uh, by number two, it's where it, all the, the rough edges are taken off, and you start to get a solid game. And it just it's, the first game seems a bit, a bit scrappy and a bit, a bit raw for me. And it, like, like, um, I mean, I, I think I generally think the same about Destruction Derby and um, the first Wipeout game. You know, they, they, they really came into their own in the second iterations of the games. And I think this is Tekken Two the same. Um, uh, 
played a lot of this, a lot of this back in the day. I was never any good, you know, I'm not saying I was any good, but I played a lot of it. Um, play through each character, um, unlocked. They're all, they're all unlockable characters, aren't they? Yeah. Play through each character um, multiple times. Just, I always seem to, always remember it, you'd get to like, could sail through it until about battle five or six, depending on who I was using. If I ever encountered Paul Phoenix, battle six, say round about there, it would just take me bloody ages to get beyond. <laughs> I just really used to hate it. I used to love playing as um, this guy, Lei Wu Long. So he was like, I was big into um, like John Woo and sort of Jackie Chan and things like that, and he's obviously blatantly sort of a Jackie Chan wannabe, isn't he? Like Law basically is uh, is is Bruce Lee, but I used to love Jackie Ch sort of a Lei Wu Long, like Jackie Chan with his with his gun holster, you know, and his flares and stuff like that. He was like the Hong Kong cop, but um, um, yeah, I can remember actually. I can remember. I thought I was really good at this game. I thought I was really good. I remember going to a bar with my mates, and there's this friend of a friend was there, and. Uh, uh, I didn't know the guy, but um, there was a, a Tekken, um, Tekken 2 cabinet, uh, arcade cabinet in this bar, uh, and he goes, "Fancy game?" Right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't let on that I got this on the PlayStation. I went, oh, you know, I'll go and have a game, and I'd unlocked all the characters, on the, all the unlockable characters, all the bosses and stuff, and um, I'd there's a sort of slightly cheesy character in it who does Taekwondo. Um, I forgot, is, is it Bake? B-A-E-K, he's got long hair, and he was a bit cheesy because he's really, he's sort of like, I think he was like sort of the Tekken 2 version of Eddie Gordo from Tekken 3, he was a bit cheesy and quite powerful and really easy to, to, to use, so I thought, oh, I'm going to pick him, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this guy's ass. <laughs> in theory, theory, yes, not in practice, didn't work like that in practice. It's me trying to deal with the moves, and in the in the meantime, he's just going button bashing, and I'm getting my ass kicked. With you know, well, I thought I was got a bit smug there, but no. Um, I, I not really. Um, I don't really know all of the the different. There's, there's sort of all the really in depth moves. Like I can remember, I remember playing this and fighting King, and King just linked together this four five lock move like throw move and it just like i think where the hell did that come from it just came out of nowhere i'd never seen it before i had the game for months and i'd never seen his move before he just went from one to the other to the other i had, I had I have no idea how to pull that one off but um tekken three um yeah well it's tekken three isn't it um preference i don't know to be honest I don't know what which one i prefer um i had this one when i was at university i, I bought it with my then girlfriend, uh, we bought it from Curry's, and then we got like a, a free um, PS One sleeve uh, uh, disc holder sleeve thing case with it. And she she wasn't really into video games, but she was sort of like a, an enthusiastic amateur, and uh, she decided to go halves, and somehow it ended up in my ended up in my possession. So sort of afterwards, after we left university, and sort of we because we're not obviously not together anymore, but uh, I ended up with a game. Although this isn't actually my original copy; that one got traded in years ago. But um, yeah, my um, my mate used to be able to beat this using Eddie Gordo. I can remember. I think it's a story I've told a few times. I remember he would come back from the pub, like pretty pretty rat assed, and we'd go and put on Tekken Three, and he'd sit there, he'd sit there, basically put his head down, close his eyes, put his head down, and just basically button bash his way, random button presses through the whole of Eddie Gordo's um, Eddie Gordo's. Uh, campaign you know and, and beat it you know so it's a bit cheap eddie gordo's a bit of a cheap character but i like him though you can't help but like the character especially in his with his afro but um yeah this is another one i've pretty much played uh got all the unlockable characters and stuff you know a little bit weirder than this one slightly odder characters you know like the, i don't know but um i always found the final kept the final boss on this a lot easier than the you know the big weird like dragon thing, I can't remember what it is. Well, some I don't know why it's a dragon. I always found, pardon me, I always found it a lot easier. Don't know why, but I did. Uh, um, 
often I could I could sort of perfect it, perf be you know without taking any damage. It's really odd, but just getting close and just wail away. But yeah, so two cracking games. Um, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily go as far as say they're my favourite three D three um, D fighters on the PS One. Uh, primarily because uh, they're, they're sort of so common. I'd, I'd like the novelties of certain other games, like um, like, um, like Evil Zone and things like that. But obviously, uh, they're, they're, they're the games I've played the most, and I know them really well. But you know, they're, they're so common and they're so well known. I just I'd just like something a little bit different, you know, because I'm a bit bloody minded. But um, like this one's I've not really played too much of. I, I've actually used to have the first game, but um, played a lot more of that. Um, I don't even know where I got this. Actually, no, no, I do. I think I bought this because I was trying to build up um, a, a collection of decent games to sell on, and for some reason, I, this one never. You know, I had, I had some rubbish that I wanted to sell on. I just wanted to get rid of it, and um, I wanted some half decent games to sort of bundle it with, just so that all the rubbish didn't look too rubbish. Well, I suppose, I suppose it would do, wouldn't it? By comparison, in direct comparison, I didn't work. I, my, the logic. Didn't obviously didn't work, but anyway, but somehow still got it. But <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Uh, but yeah, Tenchi Two. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, I played a lot more of the first game, and not really played this. But this ninja stealth game you can't really go wrong, can you? Uh, Tenchi Two. Create your own stealth ninja missions with mission editor model. Um, a game I've played a lot of. This isn't my original version, this is Time Crisis. My original version came with the G-Con. I got that, I got that Christmas of 1999. So I remember playing this, I was playing this over the millennium. Not actually on the millennium, I went out. I wasn't, I didn't stay in and play it. I went out, I was out on millennium, millennium night New Year's Eve, yeah. I didn't stay in and play Time Crisis. <laughs> um, and I, I got the G-Con pack for Christmas that year. And I got really good at this. I even I sort of uh, developed my own technique where I got the G-Con. I realised that if I was holding it, hold the G-Con at arm's length, sometimes, I, unless you keep your, your wrist dead straight, you have to sort of, sometimes it goes slightly like that and you, your aim would be slightly off because you, you know. So I, I, I developed this technique where I'd hold the gun up to my, up to my eye so I could look right down the sight and, um, yeah, <laughs> don't know if it worked or not, but that's how I used to play it. I used to sit in front of my, my big old fat uh, CRT telly like that, just for hours. I, got, I did get quite good at it. I, you know, I beat it every time, and I knew where all the characters were. You know, obviously, if you play it that much, you know where they're going to pop up. But I don't think I ever did. I ever get through it without taking damage? No, I don't think I ever did. But this is, I'm, I'm thinking this is probably one of the games I would have been best at. But again, I don't think necessarily think this is the sort of game. Don't, I'm sure I played the the arcade, the arcade version after that, and I'm sure I didn't do that well on it. So like Tekken Two, I'm sure it's not necessarily the sort of game that if you've got the play, PlayStation One version, it wouldn't necessarily translate to being really good at the arcade version. I don't know, but it's a little bit chunky and blocky now. It's a bit ugly, but I'm, I prefer that one to this one. I prefer the original to this one. I just the the, the additions of the the being able to being able to um, sort of move your perspective slightly by shooting icons. I don't know, it just complicates things, but it's a good game and it's 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 a time crisis game at heart, but I just prefer the simplicity of the original, even though this one looks better. Not much, but... Yeah, it's, it's a time crisis project Titan. Tobal number one. Now, this is essentially a one-on-one -on -one fighter, but it's... I've got a lot of time for this game, and a lot of people will knock it. It's a Squaresoft game, but it's, it's yeah, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighter. It's poly, again, it's another three D polygonal one-on-one -on -one fighter. It, it doesn't look that good. It's very basic, chunky polygons, but very smooth, very smooth. They look smooth and rounded edges and stuff, you know. Um, but the game's relatively slow, but the animation is dead smooth, and the actual controls are pretty responsive, so it makes it playable, but it's, it's quite slow. 
And the actual combat's quite slow. But uh, is that does that work? Sort of a uh, slow game but responsive, I don't know. But I actually, I've got a lot of time for it. Um, at heart, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighter, but there's um, a quest mode where you sort of run through this maze and you it's sort of like... Slightly RPG elements where you have like a life bar, but it has um, sort of numbers attributed to it. You have stats and things, and you can collect things, and you can collect items, and you can replenish health. And you run through this maze, and you encounter um, you encounter um, enemies and things like that. But there's eight eight characters. Um, they're all quite basically drawn, but again, I like I don't mind that. Um, the, the the controls are pretty clunky for the actual quest mode because it involves you have to run through this maze and it involves sort of like a double forward press to run otherwise you're you're inching forward like you're in sort of fight mode because you're pretty much always in fight mode. Sorry, I've got itchy, itchy lip, but um, otherwise you have to, you have to like I said you have to press sort of double double forward press to run. And then you have to steer, but then there are, there are sheer drops and every time you drop off it places you back on the path again. But um, uh, it takes some of your energy, it's a bit annoying, but then there's there's plenty of food to collect and stuff like that and, and replenish. And there's lots of um there's a, there's actually a practice mode where you run through the maze and it, it gives you all these instructions in in the form of sort of notices. I quite like that idea actually, it's quite a nice way of doing it, in the form of notices on the side. And you know, but yeah, I think there's a there's a, a second game, but it was Japan Japan. Japan only, I think. But yeah. It's a toe barrel number one. Um, not a bad one on form fighter. It's um, like, probably won't be for everyone. Um, Toka Touring Car Championship, um, a decent, uh, decent racing game. Um, tough. <laughs> I find this really difficult. Um, I don't know. I, I lose a lot in this game, but I, I like uh, it. it it harks back to the glory days of um, touring car racing. Back when touring cars were really good, and like there was all these sort of, um, you know, I used to watch it a lot, but I don't so much now. Is Jason Plato still going? Because he was a bit of a twat, wasn't he? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's got it's. I like the sounds in it. It's got that that sort of sort of telltale it's really sort of sound. Um, it's almost like whistle. I don't know what you call it. What's what part of the engine? It's like the turbo, the turbo charger. I don't know, but um, it's fairly realistic recreation of um, of a uh, sort of touring car racing. But in that sense, difficult. I, I mean, I I can remember for, for a long time just taking. You know, it took me a long time to get to grips with it, and and it's not quite so arcadey. And if you ever go off, or if you you know you break at the wrong time or something, you, you send your car into a spin or something like that. And it used to really get my tits, and it took me a long time to adjust to to, to that sort of um, those sorts of controls. But there's probably people out there going, "What the fuck are you talking about? This is pissy." <laughs> well, I just, I just distinctly distinctly remember the, the, sort of for a long time when I had this. I'd just if I if I'd go off slightly, I'd end up doing like a three sixty and end up facing the wrong way, and it'd take a long time to turn around. You know, and I, I'd always end up last at sixteen. I'd end up sixteenth, but. It looks pretty chunky. It's quite pixelated. I find it's quite difficult to spot corners because of how pixelated it is. So I mean, it takes a long time to get to get used to, or to to learn the the tracks so that you know which corners are coming. You can't necessarily spot them because it's got the little um, the little not echelon things, the little arrows that point in the direction. Direction you can't really see them until you're right up close. But yeah, it's it's a decent uh, racing game. And last five. You might be able to guess what these are. T's, um, giveaway, there you go, Tomb Raider. It's Tomb Raider 2, 3, Last Revelation and Chronicles. There you go. Um, this one, not again, not my original copy. This one is a game that I got with my PS1. That is my original PS1 behind me there. Um, but this isn't my original copy. Um, I got this along with Destruction Derby 2 and Star Gladiator. Um, I I remember playing this for a long time, getting a chunk of the way through the game, then taking the taking my PlayStation. I think I, I think I was at university, and 
I think my mum collected me because we were going home for Christmas. No, actually, we were going to my aunt's. So I took all of my stuff, plus my PlayStation, to my aunt's for Christmas. And my little cousin, he was a little kid, he was sort of, I don't know, about four or five, wanted to play on it. And somehow he'd been fighting around on my PlayStation and he, 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 um, he uh, wiped my Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider game save and it really pissed me off. And I don't think I've played this, this game to any extent since. Because <laughs> it's a big chunk of the game. But, but I imagine the controls are pretty... Unforgivable, I don't know, no, they're sort of naive, naive, because I've played this one more recently and the, the controls are, are just awkward. It's probably more to the camera. I think I found the camera in this too jerky. I mean, the, neither of these two have analog controls, so it's pretty much you don't have control over the camera. It's whatever you, the, I know you do, you have the look function, but you don't have control proper control over the camera once you're moving. So there's certain instances where the camera won't spot the spot a jump you have to make because you're close to a wall or something because it can't get in right behind you. And that's frustrating. So you sort of have to make a blind jump. You have to use the, the look function and then to, to judge it and then revert back and then make a blind jump having, having sort of already tried to judge it previously. Makes sense, that makes sense here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, I've, got a lot of, I've got a lot of love for this game, actually, though, to be honest. Um, good memories. I, I, it's one of the first games ever made me feel claustrophobic. I, don't, I mean, I'm not claustrophobic, and, you know, not that I've really ever been locked up in any sort of confined spaces to, to know full well if I am or not, but I'm pretty certain I'm not. But this one, it's just those first underwater um, swimming sections in enclosed spaces. That's that's quite an effective thing to have in a game to to make you feel a bit sort of tense, and um, you know that's well she's an iconic character, isn't she, uh, Lara Croft? I mean, she's obviously in this. She started off as sort of a bit of a bit of a sort of teenage boy's sort of fantasy, wank fantasy. <laughs> And now look where she's she's become sort of a bit of a feminist icon. But um, I I think I ruined this game for myself, I, I, which I had a habit of doing when I was a kid. Oh, well, actually, I, I don't actually I wasn't even that young. I talk about when I had my PlayStation as being a kid, but I was I think I got it when I was nineteen, so I wasn't that young. <laughs> anyway, um, here's a cheat: you can get all weapons, and I used to use that. I think is it all weapons? Yeah. And I can remember um, using Uzis on the. Uh, I mean, that's an iconic scene, isn't it? Using Uzis on the uh, the T Rex when the T Rex comes barreling out of the darkness at you. But, uh, that's another game actually. It uses the darkness, the sort of short draw distance, the, the darkness to its to its um, to, to its advantage. I think by three, I think it was starting to come into, into its own. So I, I I do enjoy this game quite a lot. Again, it's still got the clunky controls, but it's, they feel slightly smoother and slightly more responsive. It, um, this uses analog controls, but I can't use it. I can't use the analog controls because the camera is too jerky, it's too responsive, it's too twitchy. Using the the right thumbstick as um, you know for the camera, it's just too all over the place, and it's just I find it a lot easier to use um, just to use the standard sort of D pad and the look function. Because otherwise, otherwise it's just like, it's an automatic look function if you've got the analog controls on. It's just too all over the place. But no, I like this game. It just it throws you into the deep end. It's just right, get in there and sort it out. It just it, it, I think more so than the first two. It's more trial and error in the classic sense of. I suppose you could compare it to something like um, Heart Darkness. So it's one of those games where it throws you into the deep end, in at the deep end, and you, you have to sort it out and you have to learn the situations and then it's sort of trial and error, it's sort of rinse and repeat, so, so to speak. And you have to learn what to do and where to go and where to jump because, because the situations are really immediate, the, the threats are right there. Like this one, for instance, it places you on this, this sort of rocky outcrop and it looks like, it's just, like, it looks like grass, be real, it's not grass, it's like a canopy. You walk onto it and you drop down and you slide down a slope. It's the first thing that happens. 
and there's spikes sort of embedded into this slope and you have to you have to spot them and jump them and that happens straight away. So I like that. And there's a whole sort of a situation of places way to ways to die inside the first inside the first little area. But you know. Uh, a, a preference for this one over the first two. These last two I've not played so much, so I've got the whole series. I've not played so much, um, so I won't really comment on those two. But I'm guessing they they show her evolution, and that's part of the reason why I like the series because it's it's not quite so. Um, I know it's not quite so. Um, it didn't last quite that long into the PlayStation's lifespan. I mean, the last one was in 2000. You go know, from it was 95. First one 95. Like um, Chronicles, it's from 2000. That's 96, so they must have done f five in four years. Jesus. Yeah, 2000, so... But, I mean, I suppose there wouldn't have been any, any more since until the, the PS2. Actually, the PS2 would have around by then, wouldn't it? Of course it would, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, yeah, There's, there wouldn't be any reasons anymore, would they? Right, that's my selection of teas. Hopefully, uh, I'll be a bit more on the ball next time because um, I would have got rid of all this. <sighs> um, this, the devil inside me. Oh, I don't know, what was that? <laughs> what is that? Is that, a, is that a film? Yeah, anyway, I don't know. Um, I don't like ending with ads on. I was trying to have film four in the background. Maybe I should have my Wii running. Or something on on that because I could plug that in at the same time. But a bit late now, isn't it? <sighs> Thirty two minutes. I'm going to end it here. Um, thanks for watching. Sorry, it's such a long one. Um, I'll be hopefully I won't be ill next time. I'll be a bit more on the ball. I'll leave you to to peruse the ads as they as they're running. And I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.